What's up everybody, Brian Tong here. And in case you didn't know, Apple has released the public betas for a majority of their OSs, right? iOS, iPadOS, macOS. In front of me, we've got an iPad with iPadOS 26. And so what I'm gonna be able to do now is talk about it, really show you some things, but more importantly, the things that are useful. I'm not gonna show you every single feature, but the stuff that I use on the daily, the stuff that's gonna be useful for me and you. So let's get into it. All right, so I'm here on my lock screen. Yes, this is one of the ones that Apple has, but let's just jump into the appearance and some of the cool things stylistically that they're doing. And you're like, oh, Brian, are you gonna show me wallpapers and spatial scenes? Yes, because I actually think they're cool. They're cooler than I thought, and I think they look really good on a big screen. So I'm gonna go into my settings here, and under settings, let's go find wallpaper, okay? And so if you can see here, I've there, you know, there's some preset ones. There's a Michael Jordan one. There's what, the purple one that you saw. But let's go and do and add a new wallpaper. So obviously, Apple will have their own recommendations, but I like this, right? The spatial scenes, this adds another element and texture and flavor to the wallpaper. So I'm gonna go with something like this. This is me and my wife when we were out in uh, Europe recently. And so if we look here, okay, we have a nice background. You can actually change and manipulate the time. We saw that, I don't want it to cover our faces here. You can see liquid glass and some of the elements here. Widgets, if you wanna play around with those, you can add those the way that you want, search with them. But I'm just going to say, okay, let's add this. It's gonna add the wallpaper for us. It's gonna give us, hey, set it as a wallpaper pair. I'm gonna set it as a wallpaper pair. And then also what's important is that that second wallpaper, I like it to be blurred out so I can customize this. And it's, you can either choose it to be a color, a gradient, or I'm gonna go with the blur here. So let's go with the blur there, okay? Hit done. So this is what the wallpaper is gonna look like. This is my current wallpaper, all right? So I'm going to now, let's go to our wallpaper here. Let's just play around with our little lock screen. And you'll see here, this is a spatial scene, right? So I don't know if you can see this, but it actually has this really cool depth of field as it moves, just the, the image really comes alive more. Let's do this and work on another one. So I'm going to add a new wallpaper here. Let's, some of them have a lot more of a dramatic effect with that, with that. So let's go with here. Okay, let's choose something like this. Okay, so we have me here in front of an Apple Store building. I'm just gonna hit add here, okay? And again, we're gonna go through the same thing. I just wanna show you what the main lock screen looks like and how it can be really cool and fun, okay? So it sets it as my current. I'm going to actually change this now. And here you see me in front of the store. It's so you can really do a lot of dramatic motion on there, side to side. So again, I like the idea of just ran randomly having these wallpapers in a, you know, a sequence where you can get different photos and they kind of surprise and delight you. Again, not the most important thing, but with a, wa a large screen device like this, I think it actually makes a difference. So enough about spatial scenes, all right, we saw that. Let's talk about the useful stuff because that's why we're here and how iPad OS 26 has really changed how I use this and this has to do with Windows management and multitasking and so I'm gonna do my best to show this to you on the fly without screwing anything up because we're I'm constantly just throwing all types of stuff on this iPad. So obviously when you normally use an iPad, you launch an app, it fills the screen, right? I have something like my web browser, I have something like the athletic app, it fills the screen all the way full. Okay, cool. Now you also have down here in the corner this little handle where I can then drag and resize and move this app around freely. I can have multiple apps that are doing that at the same time. So I can have like the YouTube app. It remembers where it was last time. I can pull it over here. You might be a messy app type person that has four or five, that's okay. You can always, if you want to, you can swipe up. Expose pops you back to your desktop. Okay, so we have some of these apps here. Let's go and open back up, right? We have YouTube. But here on the top, you have this thing called the traffic lights. I'm gonna hit them here. Red, yellow, green, close, minimize, and expand. But if you hold on there, you have a different options of how you wanna move and position these apps. So I'm gonna put here our friend YouTube over in the corner. And what you can also do is if I wanted to, this should work, I'm gonna flick this. There you go, to the right. And it fills it out perfectly, two apps now. And then you have this slider in here to adjust. Maybe you want to prioritize one app or the other versus based on its size. Now, if we come in here and let's look down in our dock um, and see what else we wanna throw in here, let's get something like, let's bring in the web browser again. Okay, I'm gonna minimize and make it a little smaller. 
But this three app thing is, is not working for me. I'm just gonna go here and hold down and we're gonna give it the three column treatment. This is probably my favorite use case. I sometimes have notes on one side, YouTube on the other, and then a, something maybe like my photo gallery, just multiple apps doing different things that you couldn't have this layout set up before. So I love this. If you wanted to, let's open up another app here. Um, let's try our calendar. Our calendar is over in this corner, but again, if I hold on those traffic lights, now we have four apps in four different corners. I can swipe up for my uh, trackpad with three fingers expose. If I want to do three fingers and hold, it then brings up this whole thing where you can then minimize and close windows and see what's open. But if you just think about the versatility that this offers, this is something that the iPad didn't have in. I absolutely am using this constantly all the time and it really has changed how I use my iPad and made it a lot more useful. Now here's another thing, we talk about how everyone says, oh, make iPad more like a Mac, but I think what they've really done here is give the iPad more desktop-like features, but really still kept it like an iPad, which is really a, just like right there inside to like uh, thread that needle. And so here's a nice way of showing what that's like. We have Safari here, right? We're web browsing, we're navigating around, but if you swipe down from the top, you'll actually see the menu options for this app. This is straight up just like a desktop. I can use my trackpad and you can even notice the mouse cursor here is not a circle. It's a more accurate like right pointer, which is gonna come in handy if you're ever editing videos or things like that. But this functionality here really enables you to make this feel like it's more than just an iPad. So that's another cool feature of actually handling your apps. Okay, so now let's go here and check out some of the file and folder organization. So I'm gonna go to my files folder here. Again, as I've learned to do more content on this, I do have to pay attention to, you know, where my files are going. And so you have different, obviously different views. You can look at it as an icon view or a list view of, you know, the different files and folders that you have available on this. But I'm gonna stick to list view real quickly and show you some of the customization you can do. So you can see here, you can color code your folders now, and this is really easy to do. I'm gonna hold on this folder and you'll have a variety of different options. I'm gonna actually go down to customize folder and tags and hit that. And so not only can I tag this folder with emojis if I want to, right? Whatever specific thing I feel like, okay, maybe this is a, a hands like look up, like warning, but also I can color tag this. So let's make this one maybe purple. And then instead now you have a purple folder with an emoji tag. You have a red folder. We obviously have our different colored folders on our desktop. Those can actually talk to each other if you're sharing a similar folder. So that is another way that you can dig deep and organize your files in a better way. Now, when I wanna use this as a tool, really a tool, let's say for recording podcasts on the fly and making it easier to reach out to some friends or just record anything I wanna create, I'm gonna go here to FaceTime and I'm going to call my buddy, John Kim. So let's just give him a call here and see what happens, all right? Let's go do FaceTime, personal call, okay. So I'm gonna wait very patiently, and he's gonna pick up. All right, what's up, JK? What up? Okay, so he's saying hi. Now, I wanna show you all what some of the options here that you can do, at least, first of all, when calling someone. I'm, I'm jumping all over the place, but you'll get, you'll get with me. So see these three dots? You wanna hear, click on those, and you'll see some cool options when you're doing calls. One is live captions. So let's start off with that. I'm gonna hit live captions and we'll give it a moment. You can see the captions box pop up. So uh, John, say something to people. What's up, Ray? Today we had a burrito and that was pretty good for lunch, right? I mean, it was a fat burrito, I'll tell you that. It was? It came with chicken. Okay, this is great. And if you see, this is a live uh, caption. This is using Apple intelligence. He actually does not have any iOS or iPad OS 26 on his device. So I can communicate with people that do not have it and it just locally works on my device. Okay, so now let's try something different here. We're gonna do live translation, right, in iPad OS 26. So I'm going to show you the feature here. It shows you which language. Right now, if I click on here, French, German, Portuguese, Spanish, JK is not fluent in any of those, but he's gonna help us for this demo. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have Spanish. I'm gonna hit start translation and give it a shot, John. Hola, Brian, como estas? It says, hello, Brand. How, how are you? So it almost got my name. <laughs> habla ingles. It says, habla ingles. 
speak English. Uh, where is the bathroom? So it does take a few moments to process it, but other than not necessarily getting my name right, it got all the fundamental things right. It showed right here. So that is live translation with iPad OS 26, and you can really call anyone on any app, and it's going to do that. So that is pretty sweet. Adios. <laughs> Goodbye. All right, so those are cool features, actually useful, okay? Next up, I'm gonna show you local capture. And as a content creator, why this is important. So the first thing you need to do is go to Control Center, and you actually need to add the local capture button. It's not there, so I'm gonna click on Add Control. I'm gonna type in local, all right? Here's local capture right there. So I'm gonna add that button or that Control Center option to Control Center itself. So now when I see it, you'll see local capture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this button uh, the next time I call John so that it will record my video, my audio, and it'll do it really cleanly. I'll have my own version of a file. So if you ever do interviews or things like that, this is perfect. So let's call John one more time. Yo, part two. Okay, so I'm gonna show everyone at home, local capture, I'm gonna hit that button. It's gonna save it to my downloads. I'm gonna hit start recording. Okay, it's gonna stop the screen recording that we're doing, okay? Just to let you know, we've been doing that just to document this, okay? So local capture is going on. Now this is a fun thing about it. Again, it is not recording John's side of the conversation, but mine. John would have to record, do local record capture on his own side. The cool thing, this is works on not only iPad OS 26, but iOS 26 as well. Now if I wanna jump into some of the features, let's try this. I'm gonna swipe down and let's try and put in my AirPods because with AirPods, uh, you can actually record spatial audio sound with here. And if you can look here, this is giving me a few different options, but I could go to input and currently it's same as system. It changed over to my AirPods Pro, but I could choose to use the iPad microphone. I could use to use BTZ's AirPods Pro. I'm also gonna go over here and you can see the different ways it captures the audio. It could use, it's, right now it's working automatically. I could go with standard audio capture, voice isolation capture. So let's say you're in a busy or a louder environment, or you just wanna try to keep it even cleaner. Voice isolation is also another option. So by me wearing AirPods, it changes not only options that I have to record the quality of the audio, but I can change the input. And so this is all done on an iPad. What I can do now when I'm done with everything, I can then end the local capture. So let's do that for a second. I'm gonna click on this icon, that red button there, it says stop, okay? So local capture, it even says right up here, this video is gonna be saved to my file. So what we're gonna do now is, um, JK, we're gonna say bye to you, later bro. Bye. And now what I'm gonna do from here is go to files, and let's see, there should be an option here that says local capture, here we go. So we have two local capture files, this one was the most recent, and this is the one this that I did this. with JK, okay. and this actually so has, you know, my, my voice, the audio, this is my side. He just needs to deliver his and then I can just put something together. So this is a way to show this is more than just an iPad. Now this is a content creation tool natively on device. So again, I didn't show you everything, but I really wanted this to, yeah, it was a, might have been a little sloppy at times, but just a more organic presentation of the features that I use, the features I'm going to use. And I think iPad OS 26 has been great again more desktop-like features while still being an iPad. I think that's huge. So make sure if you want to, you can sign up for the public betas. It's absolutely free. You can put them on your devices. Uh, the key thing I would say is, I don't recommend you to put it on your primary device if it's your only one device. If you do, you can do it at your own risk. I would say they are generally stable, but there is a first look really hands-on deep dive and really my favorite features in iPad OS 26 on the public beta.